Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All right, good morning, the month of the Lord's church. Praise be to God. My name is Pastor Christoph Akagla. I'm a pastor here at the month of the Lord church, and I want to welcome you, our dear sister who is here to visit us. Ellen and uh, all those visitors and the good people who show up again, I'm so happy to see you. The day, like I always say, is a good day. God is calling us to make a difference. A call to make a difference. We all have a, a different kind of position in life. The Bible talks so clearly, some people are apostles, apostle, teachers, and uh, evangelists, pastors. Some people are just regular people who's working so hard to see things happening. No matter what position you are in, God is calling you to make a difference. To make a difference is, uh, is something God expects from you and from me. Life, the Bible says, once you become a Christian, this life doesn't belong to you anymore. It's for you to give away. So if we are not in a position of giving things away by our character, by the way we serve, the way we respect and just be in the principle that God set it up for us, then it's something we are missing. So this morning is about to challenge you a little bit. Are you making a difference in this life? I don't care where you are. You can be in your office. You can be a director of your position you are in. You can be a teacher. You can be anything. What kind of difference are you making? Because we have to. A guy called us to make a difference. Today we're going to be talking about Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And we're going to be talking about something that we will see how God can use regular people who are very, very connected to Jesus. And because of their connection, they'll be able to do something that everybody who don't have the same spirit might be saying, no, you shouldn't be doing that. This is too far away. Just not the right way to do it. People who are not in the place that we're supposed to be at the right time to do the right things, they can never understand the power of serving, the power of sitting at the feet of Jesus, the power of making a change of differences in somebody's life. So we're going to go through John Chapter 12, when Jesus was anointed with a perfume prior to his death. So we're going to read verse 1 to 11. John chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus. The man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, whipping his feet with her, jar, with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume was worth a year wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some of for himself. Verse 7, Jesus replied, 
leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus. The man Jesus has raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. So we're going to go through three times in Jesus' life he was anointed by oil. I want to do that and then we're going to pray over the whole thing that we were talking about. The first time is in Luke chapter 7. When Jesus was anointed by a sinful woman, or people say is an immoral woman. Verse, uh, Luke 7, 36 said that one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, he brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. That's the first one. The second anointing also happened at the home of a Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. So verse 7, while he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. And they said, what a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, why criticize this woman for doing such a good things to me? Just the, the second point. The third anointing, that's what we are in, in uh, John chapter 12. John chapter 12, this case is so special. It's a story that uh, people always heard about, how Lazarus was being raised from the dead. And uh, people heard that that same person and in the family of Mary and Martha, they are organizing to host Jesus Christ. And the people heard about it. And that place was flock for a lot of people. Some people just want to make sure that this really, that the person was raised. They want to know. They just were so curious. The Bible says that Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wept, whipped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. You can imagine that that kind of perfume is not seen everywhere. This is those kind of things that when it stick with your smell for so long, maybe a couple of weeks, I don't know, or a couple of days, this is a, a kind of perfume that's so expensive. That means that in the room, the smell is overwhelming. So if the window is open and you walk by, you can sense it. That's wow, something good is smelling here. So you can tell that the, the perfume we were talking about so attractive is also something that will make people want to find out what is going on here. The disciple re uh, reaction is predictable, like we always see over time. So Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, said, why was this anointing, anointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Can you imagine serving your master? And we have one master. And we are doing what we can. And among us, some people still have their own mindset of what they can get out of it, but not the benefits of serving. 
I don't know about you, there are moments like way. Because if you see the culture also we are living now, the, the things is about what I can get out of it. It's not about serving anymore. We all want to serve. We all want to do, go to the community. We all want to do good things. But most of people, what they do is what I can get out of it. It's not about serving. Otherwise, this disciple, Iscariot, Jesus Iscariot, could not speak in that way. He is a self-concern. He is about himself. That's why the contrast is here is so clear. We can see that Mary express her feeling and the costly gift right here. She took the place of a servant, and she possessed a spiritual discernment when she anointed Jesus' body for burial. That was so clear, her reaction. But on that side, we can see Judas Cario also of her selfishness. You know, he, he come with a critic, and he was one of the disciples who would betray Jesus Christ. You can see the big difference about these two people. You see that Mary has a deeper thirst and a deeper understanding of that moment because the moment is critical. Any moment we are in, we have to be able to discern what God is about to do. So this moment for, for Mary is so special worth her special bottle of perfume. It doesn't matter when every expert, uh, expert saying that this kind of perfume is really expensive. And when you look, you Google a little bit, you see the expensive perfume in our time today. Very, very expensive. That was, that's the way it was back then. So the point here is Mary had a deep thirst and a deeper understanding at that moment. Something that he understood, she understood so well. She somehow knew it was time to stop and anoint Jesus. So in response, we saw also what Jesus said. Leave her alone. That's the master we are serving. Everybody, the critic come, but Jesus said, no, leave her alone. That's the message right there. And he continued this. For the poor will always, will always have with you, but you do not always have me. But some people might say, well, this is he care for the poor? Yes, he care. Because Jesus, why he's saying there are commentary argue at Jesus' references. So you saw that in uh, Deuteronomy 15, 11, said that there will always be poor people in the land Therefore, I commend you to be open-handed. You know, if you truly, truly want to serve, and you want to lay down your life, there are only one way, only through Jesus Christ. Because we are with uh, the selfishness or the power of the flesh, you know, the nature in which we grew up is not permit us to be able to serve really. Fully serve with a good heart. But the only way you can serve with a good heart, you have to have God in your life. You have to understand that serving is not about what I can get out of it. It's about give totally my life, lay down my life, and make people know who walking through me. Because it's not about me anymore. God wants to see people who can serve this way. So when Jesus said that you always have the poor always with you, that means that this is something that we see all over, all over the, the world. The poor have attention of God, but he wants us to be able to serve them in the way God wants us to serve them and not the selfish way. So much is given to us in the gospel story. When you see those things I'm related to in John, you can, you, can, you can sense the hope 
the resurrection all smell like a beauty broken spell out for the sake of love. You know, when we talk about the gospel, it's something just so beautiful on it. And you can see all these things. You may not see it clearly, but the revelation, the remnant, and, uh, and all these things that come out of it just tell you exactly what God is doing, how, where he's going through it. Jesus Christ is almighty. So for us to understand the power of God, we have to abide in his word. We have to be people of children who just understand, who want to have more of him. More you have of him, more, more you, can, you can have a sense of understanding of where God is going. If you don't have more God of you, the world just becomes a world. You don't even get it. You can read it with knowledge, but you don't sense anything out of your spirit because you are not, it's not inside you can, can, can see that. So my prayer this Sunday at this room, for all of you, for those who are watching, is for you to really have God inside you. And every step of way, God always speak. God always wants to have a way out in your life so somebody might see his glory through you. We are a vessel of the Almighty God. We are people that God wants to use so that the whole world will understand that we have a a Savior. So if our lives are not productive and we are not ready to be used, who, what are we here for? What, is, what is really, what impact? We are talking about making impact, making a difference. What difference we are making? People need to know that your Christianity is real. People need to know that when you say, I'm serving Jesus Christ, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer, people have to see that. You don't have to quote a scripture for people to know that you love Jesus, you serve God, but you're who you are, the personality God that is abundant inside of you, overflow through you, through your actions, what you say, the way you react to people, it's just evident that you have God inside of you. What will... What, what will we do while we have Jesus with us? Is speak louder. So let's talk about self, selfless devotion flow from knowing Jesus personally. If you love your God, I will know it. People will know it. You don't have to make, tell them anything. Just your action, people will know it. Uh, verse 12, verse 7, John 12 said, Therefore Jesus said, Let her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. So Mary has just poured out the precious perfume for anointing Jesus' body in anticipation of his death. So what he's doing, she's doing here, only God who will know. She probably have something about her that she's doing something that a lot of people don't understand it. Mary's personal knowledge of Jesus gained her to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And that, that makes her have a, a kind of devotion, personal devotion with her, with him. You know, when you have a, a devotion Life of a devotion of Jesus Christ is translated in action. In other words, when you have a life of devotion with Jesus, it gives you so much vision, revelation, things, it just puts you to work. You can have a true relationship with Jesus and not be able to make a difference. It just, I don't, I, I don't know about you, but this is what I know for myself. You cannot have a strong relationship with Jesus and still the same way. And I have the desire to serve. And I have the desire to be the world changer. And I have the desire just to want to do what God called you to do. Cannot be possible. To follow Mary's example, we have to sit at the feet of Jesus. We have to listen to his word. We have to be able, able to do that. You want to love the Lord as you should and, and less. You have spent much time 
at his feet. The love we, most of the time we talk about is not just because we watch in the TV and we can put in the practice. No, far away from that. When we talk about love as a Jesus kind of love, when we talk about love as a translator for the relationship you have with him, when we talk about love as someone who steadfast in the thanks of God, have his word from here translating the heart. From the abundance of your heart, the mouth speak. From the abundance of your heart, by faith, you are in action. You have to put all, put all this in action. Self-left devotion results in action. Mary didn't just think about this radical display of law, but then allow reason to prevail. It's a something that is motivate him, her. I remember in our wedding, you know, you know, they have, when you want to have plan a wedding, you know how things look like. There are some people who know how to plan everything, and some people who, you know, they like everybody have their way. Everybody have something to do. And uh, all those things that are going to be done, you who's the person who's going to get married, they all come to you for all the detail. Sometimes they ask you to spend kind of money maybe you don't have. Sometimes they just make a proposition. And when you feel like uh, you can, you know, do all this, then they, they, they take you back and they say, oh, okay, if you're not going to do this, why not just do this? So the scale of from one to 10, 10 is you have all the money, you can do everything. So two is me that you don't have anything, you can do something like that. But all rests upon you. You are the one who's going to get married. And I told the people, I don't have money to be here, and I don't want to put my, myself down here neither, but I want to be here. I want to do something that will respond to my heart. Because I don't, the wedding is met once for life. So if you want to do something, do it the way that satisfies your soul. So we have to come to the point where, as a Christian, do things that you know God has called you to do. I think, I believe Mary was in a position of giving the best of herself. The situation, the timing, and everything she's doing is just so amazing. One action. Action results in the fragrance of Christ surrounding your life. Verse 3, John 12. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Wow. Like I said, you can feel it. You can sense it. You can, I, I know sometimes when you are in a group and the people put some perfume, you know, the best, it's good. That's why they have, they, they can afford to have. But still the perfume have so much power, the fragrance, you can feel it, you can sense it. And we, I, I believe the Mary, anything he went with the hair full of a perfume, it's like the fragrance went with her everywhere. I think we should have uh, this kind of, can, can, can people smell the fragrance of Christ in you? The fragrance of Jesus. You go to work, you don't have to tell anybody that you are a Christian way, but your action, people can see the fragrance of Christ in you. Do you have that? If not, you have to ask God to help you. One of the things is uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. My brother always called the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, peace, patience. <laughs> And all this, the fruit of spirit, those things are helping you to really have all the fragrances that we are talking about. Because it's the Holy Spirit who is going to make the whole difference in the life of people. Your message sometimes is your lifestyle. It's not about head knowledge. We have expect that. We have done that in the past. But a mature Christian is through your action, your character, your way you live your life. Does your home smell like that? That fragrance? Do you ever sense from the fragrance of your life that you spend much time at Jesus' feet, worshiping him in selfless devotion? Because we need to be there. 
That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a good moment for all of us. It's a good moment to just see yourself in the mirror and say, God, I'm not satisfied where I am. I want more of you. Help me to go further because I know my time here is so short. We need to shake ourselves where we are and ask God to help us. Do, do your relationship at the church smell like the fragrance of Christ? Simple things we can do can make a difference. We all can make a difference. So action, result, and service for Christ. You know, Mary or Martha, let's talk about Martha. And Luke 10, 38 42, we saw how Martha, you know, um, is always care about why, why my sister is not helping me and all these things. But in John, you see Martha because uh, 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 Martha ser starts serving because she has a lot of responsibility. She learned from her past. Now she's doing something better now. But, but she's not complaining. She just wants to serve. I, I know our Christian life has to be the same way. We mess it up many times. Sometimes we don't even know what we were doing until we learn lesson from it. So when you learn lesson from something, you better make things right. I think we are called to make things right. We are called to fix our problem. We are called to make, because we are human. You cannot say that you are completely right. No, we make mistakes all the time. Just have, have this tendency to recognize of your, who we are. Recognize the things that we have done and ask God to help us so we may not repeat the same mistake. Let's talk about Lazarus right now. Action, result, and witness for Christ. Lazarus first has, has, God has raised him from the dead. That's first. The second, he was reclining, have fun, have fellowship with Jesus at the table. He just, great God who just, just wanted to talk. Can you imagine? I was like, wow, you really raised from the dead? You know, I want to touch you a little bit. You know, this is an amazing thing. So that's why you see people come from all, from all over. The third one that he resurrected life result in many coming to see him and believing in Jesus as a result. So his life was so public. He's alive and, uh, and, uh, and uh, he act. He want to be with Jesus, fellowship with him. And as, at the same time, people was attracted, want to know. So you cannot have a new life and stay the same way. When Jesus transformed you, when you gave your life to Jesus, you have to step in from where you are to get to the next level in the service of Jesus Christ. Lazarus was raised, but haven't stayed like that. He learned to have fellowship, and he learned to expose his life so people will come to understand that our Savior can do the same thing for them. Lazarus, Christ has given him a new life before he can witness to other people. I mean, verse 11, I love verse 11. The Bible says that on account of, uh, of, of, of Steve, or you can put all that all name down, on account of Lazarus, many were going away and believing in Jesus. You can put your name there. An account of Christopher, Pastor Christopher, hallelujah. Many were going away and believing in Jesus. An account of my brother here, you there. So, because this is the point. We are not here by accident. And we don't have to diminish what God has done in our life. Well, what he's doing even right now in everybody's life. We are here because we have something powerful in us, greater than the things in the world. Are you tapping that potential right now to minister to other people? Are you moving under the dimension of the Spirit of God that's inside you so you can make an impact, make the difference? This is the call to you and for me. You know, Judah and the Jewish leaders, 
They all want to kill Lazarus. They want to kill Jesus, and they want to kill Lazarus. This is why they are, because they are selfish. You know, they, even uh, Judah went to, 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 sell, to, uh, to sell Jesus Christ, betray Jesus with 30 pieces of silver. But you know what? If he knew what he was doing, he won't do that. Because he's so selfish. All is about him. It's nothing about serving. Because if it's not good for me, the, the rest, I don't care. I pray that we don't have that kind of attitude. Because if it's selfish, nice attitude is in our life, a, a director of our action. We can be productive. We might, we might try to pretend that we are doing something good. But at the end, it won't be what you would like to have. I pray God to help all of us. So we have a mindset of Jesus Christ. That all from, from Jesus inside us, that we can be productive. We can give something that people will look at it for themselves and say, this is only from God. Because God wants to do a great things in your life, in my life. We have note before that John presented the conflict between light and darkness. This is so clear here. What John is doing this, in this uh, uh, story is about light and darkness. Light symbolizes salvation, holiness. And the darkness stands for condemnation, sin, and death. We want to be the people of the light. God said that uh, you are the light of the world. Now is for us with humility, with a potential that God gave to us, we can display that light for the world around us. God count on you, a calling on you to make a difference. We all, we are in a position of making a difference. I want to conclude right now. The ointment Mary used will cost a year age for a common laborer. It's costly, but it's useful. Mary have saved it to anoint Christ to show her, to show her love to Jesus Christ. Everything you do, it will cost you a little bit. But if you do it, believe in what you are doing, the results are way, way bigger than anything you could imagine. How much better it is to show love to people before they die? How you care for those people around us? Hospital, family members, friends who are really going through difficulties, what do you do? Do you show, the, show them your love? Most of them cannot come back or they can even recover from it. What do you do to them? Share your light. Your light has to be on the table, not under your table, under the table. Let people know, see their light, and praise the Lord. Again, greater that is in you is higher than the one in the world. Let's light that light shine. Hmm. She could have used this ointment for himself, for herself, but she didn't. Whenever a believer shows love to Christ, there is always a critic, people who are going to complain. Don't listen to those people because what they're trying to do is not to help you to grow. They're trying to discourage you. That's why the Bible says all the time, stand strong. Know your word for yourself. Understand what God is expect from you. So all those things come against you, the world and all the credit, don't make that big deal. They're going to come anyway. The credit is going to come. Are you building your house in the rock? Or you build your house in the sand? That's the point. If it's in the rock, oh, they're going to come by you. It's just like this. You won't feel it. But if it's in the sand, then you are in a big problem. You see, when they come against Mary, Jesus defend Mary. So that means that if God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. 
Mary gave lavishly. She gave in spite of criticism. She gave lovely. Christ honored her for her worship. I want you to give lavishly. Giving is, a, is, a, is, is what is here for you. The power of the Holy Spirit is, move, is going to move inside of you that your vision will explode it so we can serve you for the fullness of the joy for everything within us. Are you ready to serve Jesus? Are you ready to give the best of yourself? There are things we feel like are too expensive for us. But really, if God is speaking to you and you take the moment of the time God is speaking to you, maybe it's that moment he won't just want to use you in a mighty way. Don't miss the moment of your, of your time. Because God does things in a different way. Be open up. Let your heart be open up for things of God because he is about to use all of us. Are you ready for God to use you? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message. Let somebody be transformed. Let somebody pull all together. God, through your direction, your, 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 your wisdom, and your power, help each one of us and those who are watching to get the things together so we can serve God with all our heart, our soul, and mind and love him the same way. Mighty God, this is our time to make a difference. Help us as a church, the month of the Lord in this community. We want to make a difference. So God, we thank you. We give a praise. We give a glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, amen. amen. Well, we, before we close it, we always give opportunity for people who are watching, for people who are here. If you never in your life confess Jesus Christ as your Lord, I want to give you opportunity. As a simple prayer, but have a big meaning. It's, a, it's like saying, after I listen to this message, I can see myself on the scale. I can tell that mm, I'm not doing well. Oh, God, I'm really going to need your help. And I want to do the best. The things that has been commanded in your word, I want to do that, but I'm not there. This is your moment to pray with me. Because sometimes, dedicate yourself. Rededicate yourself to the Lord. Uh, saying, I need help. So we're going to pray because he knows your heart already. He knows where you are. He knows your difficulty, uh, difficulties and everything you are going through. He's going to help you. Is God full of grace. He is not here to condemn you, but he is here just to wake you up, to help you. So pray with me. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. This morning I confess you that you are my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. And I ask you to restore me back to you. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everyone of uh, everyone who prayed this prayer. Everyone who just bring their heart to you through the confession of their mouth. I pray for your mercy. I pray that you have favor upon their life. Restore them back, Lord. We give all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.